Welcome, Christine Berlin from Germany. Uh, you've held a lot of roles. You're an expert in renewable energy. You're now a consultant in renewable energy. You were the head of renewable energies in Germany for the energy department or whatever it's called. Energy agency. Energy agency. A uh, lot of experience with renewable energy. And in fact, uh, you're in, you headed up that department in a country that uh, has been one of the most successful countries in the world with renewable energy. So how well is Germany doing with oh, renewable energy? We're doing very well. The German, uh, uh, the European Union has... Uh, directed us to achieve 18% of final energy consumption by 2020. We're now at around 10-ish. Uh, we have about 80, uh, 20% in electricity, around 10, a little less in uh, heat, and around 5 in transportation fuel. So in the last sector, we really have to, you know, get our act together. Just recently, you reached the 20% plateau. So 20% of your electricity comes from renewable energy sources. Yeah, mostly wow. wind, some water, a lot of biogas, uh, CHP, and also solar photovoltaics. It's amazing. And so when you were young and you were studying, uh, they, they told you that you'd be lucky to reach 4%, I understand. Yeah, we had 4%, which was old, hi old hydro. We had that right. since the beginning of electrification in Germany. And at that time, the paradigm was large centralized power stations from coal or nuclear fuel. So people thought that's, that's the game. So how did Germany and why did Germany get involved with renewable energy? Yeah, there were different phases in, in the German renewable energy history. There was first a phase of, you know, let's let's check this out, let's try this. It's not really a serious option. Then there was a phase when we were really concerned about the global climate and we said this is the only way that we have mm -hmm. to do it. We have to cherish it, we have to grow it. And then ultimately the last and most recent phase is when it became a, a real industrial powerhouse which we needed to conserve and which we needed to provide the uh, uh, proving grounds for new developments. Wow, that's really interesting. So initially you were curious and uh, then you thought you would do the right thing and now you're making piles of money off it. We are. <laughs> we have about 300 to 400,000 people only in the renewable energy field. Renewables is much more uh, labor intensive than any other en energy industry. So uh, this is money that Germans spend on the basic need to, for energy, for electricity. And this money that, that stays in Germany, increasing our energy security and enhancing our local ec energy economy. So jobs do come with renewable energy. Absolutely. That's our experience. So what are the key reasons uh, for success in Germany? Uh, the backbone of the uh, continued development was uh, the renewable energy uh, program, which some people call a feed-in tariff. I like to call it a standard offer program mm -hmm. after Ontario, mm -hmm. um, which uh, was constantly in place and got continuously refined and improved for 20 years. This provided uh, the industry as well as uh, the investors uh, security and took out a lot of risk from investing both in industry as well as in actually producing electricity. Does this cause ele electricity rates, for example, to go up a lot or what, what impact is this having on energy prices? We have a surcharge uh, that covers for, all, for the um, costs of the standing of a program. It gets distributed onto the private consumers. Industry is exempt. And uh, currently, every consumer pays uh, about 3.5 cents per kilowatt hour for this charge, compared to an uh, overall uh, electric rate of, I think, on average, 25 cents per kilowatt hour. So yes, it does add about 10% to the electric bill. People don't mind so much because they think it's for a good cause, and they are not very sensitive to electricity prices. Hmm. Interesting. So what are the uh, economic benefits of, of developing renewable energy? Well, the uh, 300,000 to 400,000 jobs. jobs come along with uh, investments per year in the range in a good year of 30 billion euros, in a bad year of 18 billion euros. Mm. So even in the financial crisis, we had lots and lots of investment activity. And obviously, um, these uh, uh, these facilities stay in place, generate revenues for their owners, which then can consume more energy or other things, which we buy from other um, branches like our car industry or the Chinese toy factory industry. Environmental benefits. What are the chief uh, environmental benefits? Yeah, we saved uh, by by substituting our background gray power mix. We saved uh, 180 million tons of CO2 per year uh, lately. Uh, that replaces power as well as heat in homes. Mm. We have large amount of home that's uh, heated now by wood pellets or wood logs or wood chips, as well as solar collectors, which are used to heat uh, hot water. 
let's uh, let's say, for instance, uh, Canada or Alberta uh, is interested in getting involved with renewable energy. What kind of what what's the main thing you would advise them to do? What's the main policy or, or thing you would suggest that they implement to get involved? There are obviously uh, grassroots activities that you can take that you can uh, on the municipality level, on the NGO level, where you can do joint. Uh, buying of uh, PV panels and then get a better price mm -hmm. and um, generate your own revenue. You can do public procurement for a green power or have green power purchase agreements with your uh, municipal consumers of electricity. Uh, if you look into Iowa, the whole Iowa wind boom started with Iowa school districts who wanted to have their own wind, wind turbines and, and procure uh, power from their own school-owned facilities. So obviously this is a, a possibility to become more independent on the on the local community level. But obviously on the provincial level, you could also think about uh, motivations like diversifying into the future of energy, not only the presence of energy, and use some of the skills that people have in this very, you know, tri uh, coal and oil-oriented and gas-oriented setting and look what kinds of skills can be used in, in a renewable energy world or in any kind of new energy world that we're looking to. Well, you've, uh, you know, you've had a lot of experience around the world in 60 different countries and uh, you're on this visit to Canada. And the world is a messy place when it comes to energy, a very messy place, you know, with the accident in Japan and uh, Germany's changing its, its direction uh, with regards to nuclear power and you've got issues around coal. Uh, what does the world look like? I, I mean, this is a tough question, but what does the world look like 25 years from now? Are we all going to go to renewables? Or is there going to be some middle path? What, what, what do you think? I tend to look at this question in terms of the three areas, electricity, heat, and mobility. We will. Uh, the heat sector is the one that's going to uh, change towards uh, extinction because the hope is that we'll have only extremely efficient uh, building envelopes and we'll need to provide right. heat only for industrial purposes or high, high energy processes. The electric sector is the one where I think we will have uh, a much greater diversity of technologies that generate it, that consume it, uh, but it's going to be much more ubiquitous than today. It's not a concentrated single source to uh, consumer kind of thing anymore. It's going to be meshed and and messy in that sense. Uh, transportation is the big, the biggest challenge because we have no convincing solution and no technological fix for the need to be more and more mobile. And that's the area where we will, you know, probably take another 10 or 15 years to even come to a, a clear view of the future. Great. Well, welcome to Canada and I hope you enjoy your stay and, uh, and I look forward to hearing you speak this evening. Thank you very much, David. It's my pleasure. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.